Can I say something about yeah, fish? Please, please. Fish, because of what I've seen in Sea Shepherd and people at Sea Shepherd and, and Sea Spiracy, and because of the amount of mercury in the ocean, mm. mercury, once it's in your body, you cannot take it out. And, and we're, we're, it's something that people, I've, there's so many people that I've heard of that went on a fish based diet and they got really sick permanently from mercury. You can't because, get it. I don't know. No, once that. mercury is in your body, and there's and the mercury in the ocean is concentrated in fish, you c it will never be removed. You'll have mercury poisoning for forever. Really? There's if there's one thing that you could actually just cut that would help the ocean, it would be fish. Like maybe there's stuff that's like locally caught, like in our rivers and our lakes, or 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 but that that fit the fish that's out there is not good for us. And it's the only it's the only wild animal that we're catching with huge drift nets that if that was done on land, we'd never get away with it. Like can you imagine taking a net and catching everything over this over yeah, it's crazy. square kilometers and just killing everything? It's crazy. We'd never get away with it. So that is I think something where the ocean does need to recover. And of course we're doing a bad job of land management with all the cattle and stuff. Can we take a sidebar on this yeah, actually? Sure. How does this happen? So you know, I, I feel like a lot of people know the buzzword, like, oh, there's mercury in the fish or whatever. Yeah. But what are we doing to, like, you had talked about the gold miners example earlier. That's a separate thing. Yeah. With the oceans, like, what are we doing that's causing the fish to have all this mercury? I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, maybe that's a, a Google thing. But I think there is naturally mercury in the ocean. Mm. Um, and maybe it's, maybe it's added to by some of our industrial processes. Um, I don't think you find mercury in in uh in like our rivers and lakes to the degree you have it in the ocean so i think it has something to do with the composition of the ocean yeah i just pulled this up from the scientific american right behind us human industrial activities such as coal-fired electricity generation smelting and the incineration of waste ratchets up the amount of airborne mercury which eventually yeah. finds its ways into lakes so, rivers, so it is our and fault. the ocean <laughs> where it, which are, where it's gobbled up by unsuspecting fish and other marine life naturally the ocean is the biggest one where we get the most stuff so that's where yeah. we're going to see the most effects right. of it but yeah that, i mean some of that i guess is like like the, the, you can't stop everything, but you know, how do you reduce a little bit? How do you yeah. also, you know, then parlay something like this into the whole, well, why are we just dropping a net and catching everything all at once? You know, why is there not some sort of process with this? Yeah. There, there is a lot of fronts here. We, we've covered so many things, but like our conversation, I think has been for the most part solutions oriented or, or, or what can we do? You know, I think the small things do matter. If, uh, if, if we did things in front of our friends, had like a couple of, of things that we did that were, you know, we're, influ we're influential on each other. You yeah. know, I, I think that's, that's something that we can each do as, as change makers. I, I just feel like the, the, at the, if we're at the point where we don't do anything because it's not worth it, like, let's not even bring the plastic bags because there's plastic on the shelves. So let's not bother. That's when I think we get into a real danger zone of everybody saying, or fucked and and there's no reason to to try to protect anything no reason to try to reduce anything no that's when capitalism's like nobody cares yeah. we can do whatever we want uh and government feels the same and that's when the future is already pre-written now like if, if paul watson said this is the curve for 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 whales this is they're going extinct that's the curve if he accepted that that's where we'd be but then he said, no, you know, it's like this. Yes. Nothing has to be the, on the, the trend that is, it, it's, it's on. Nothing does. And it's amazing how in our examples today, we've gone through a lot of times it's that small group of people, like we were saying, right. you know, so imagine what a large group of people could do. Right. But it's also. Or, or somebody comes up with a cool company that, that changes the way we do a packaging for one thing. Yes. And it's like, and that person makes so much money and does well as they should. And then everybody copies them. Right. Yeah. So now we've got tons of recycled um, uh, packaging and the next, I think the next companies should be innovating in that, in that yeah. direction. You know, the, the ones that, uh, that are, and that's happening. That's happening in fashion. That's happening in, in, maybe is it happening fast enough? But I think the young entrepreneurs that are out there that are building businesses around sustainable or green yes. or whatever, or, and eventually you won't have to even call it those things. They won't even be categorized. It'll just be a part of our values. Because that's the kind of world that we want, um, and I think that's sort of where we want to want to get to. Yeah, I mean, I I had my friend Eric Olson in here for episode one nineteen, 
and he he's an interesting case because he started off his career in big oil. Oh wow! And then yeah. it, like very quickly moved over to the sustainability side, working with plastics. And so if I go all in the nitty gritty of what he does, like he explained it very yeah. well on the third. But he probably hour. understands it. He does because yeah. he's working with a product that we villainize, like plastics, and he's yeah. like, hey, there's ways to actually say, okay, we can't fix all like the whole just remove plastics or something right yeah. now. It's not realistic. But there's ways we can make this better. Yeah. And so I'm like, damn, if we can even work with some things that are like the quote unquote villains and improve yeah. them that's a good spot to start because then the innovation overall will come up with something better than plastics down yeah. the line. And we kind of buy time doing that. But, you know, we keep coming around to how do we get people on board? How do we get people on board? How do we get people motivated? You know, you had mentioned something earlier. I think it was about Canada with World War II. Yeah. And about how you had been talking with someone, how they how they had been telling you about how they had – you know, all work together to right. get this whole machine going. Well, obviously we did something like that here in the United yeah. States. And I had heard a story a while back about how in New Jersey, for example, and I think some other states. And, and the gentleman was Seth Klein. If you want to want to look up his book, it's called. Uh, um, oh, he has a book on yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's called the, well, we could look it up. It's, it's but It has the word war in it. And it's about the climate emergency and compares it to World War II. His group is called, I think, the Climate, the climate Emergency Unit. Got it. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll check that out. Yeah. But if you if you look at like that's interesting because if if you look at like what they did on even just an every night thing on the eastern seaboard, right? We had all these U boats out there, these German U boats yeah. that were on the coast, and so people pre internet era banding together like we were talking about. If everyone were standing around a fire, what they sure. would all do, you know, not fighting about it on the internet. People shut out all their lights at eight o'clock at night, right? And so that the boats couldn't see on the shore. People worked together. Everyone yeah. started working in the factories and the hospitals and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or going out into the field, obviously, and fighting the war. <clears throat> and what strikes me is, you tie it all together. It's like, for some reason, human beings have this need to have a cause that sometimes ends in some sort of destruction. Hopefully, because they're ending some sort of evil that. Yeah. You wish never happened in the first place, but like Nazi Germany did. Yeah. You know, they get behind a cause and then and then suddenly everything goes away and they feel the desperation. And you look at society now, yeah, we've had these endless wars yeah. in this country, for example, over the past 80 years. But, you know, we stopped the draft after Vietnam. They're over there. They're yeah. not here. We, as the American empire, have never felt threatened or right. something. And so in a lot of ways... It's it's coalescing with this time where people are also losing spirituality, they're yeah. lacking meaning, and they don't have like a survival instinct. Right. The, the the battles or and the community or a collective yes. instinct. Yes. So, so there, I think there's two interesting ang ways to look at the American dream, and I'm speaking as a Canadian because we share the same ethos. We, we, we sure. share that 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 dream in, in in a way that opportunity dream. You know, there's this idea that uh, in, the, in the American dream, that, like you're an individual, you're a cowboy, you're an entrepreneur, you're going to like, you know, everybody can make it to the top. But look at the greatest things that this country has ever done, like the moon landing, or if you believe that happened, or like... <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. I wasn't going to say it. Or just like all like, you know, like all the great, uh, <sighs> the great things that, uh, that, that have happened that that you look back and you you look to times when the country rallied, whether it was a war or whether it was, uh, you know, a Hoover Dam or or just these are collective efforts yes. where the country came together and they were not operating as individualist influencers trying to get their follower count up. They were they were working. Uh, they were like schooled in sciences. They were like you know it was a country of engineers and 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 people that were building together thank you for watching the video guys please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below